Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about EDTA and its applications in the field of endodontics. As we all know that EDTA is one of the chemical agent which is exclusively used in the field of dentistry for various purposes, especially while doing root canal treatment. In this presentation, we shall see about the EDTA and its effectiveness in pulp stone removal, its effectiveness in root canal negotiation, its effectiveness in cleaning and shaping, and in smear layer removal, and finally about the regenerative endodontics and EDTA. Also, we will also see about the EDTA and its interactions with other chemicals, especially sodium hypochlorite and the EDTA and the incidence of file fracture. So let's stay tuned and let's dive straight into the presentation. First, we all know that EDTA is available in two forms. One, it is available in the gel form. Usually it is combined with urea peroxide or carbamide peroxide and it is used for uh, as a lubricant while doing cleaning and shaping and variety of purpose. And the other form of EDTA is in the liquid form. Uh, smear clear from Cybron Endo is one of the famous product which is a liquid form of EDTA which is helped to remove the smear layer while doing root canal treatment. We shall see about all those things in the coming minutes. First, Let's see about the pulp stone removal and the effectiveness of EDTA. Let's see that there is a pulp stone which is present in this uh, maxillary molar and we have prepared the access cavity. There is a common thought that if you apply EDTA, the EDTA is going to dissolve the pulp stone and it can be removed easily. If you are placing EDTA on top of the pulp stone, it, may, it might disintegrate the pulp stone for a 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters and not, nothing deeper than that. So in such a circumstance, uh, EDTA will not be a agent which is really helpful for pulp stone removal. So there is also a school of idea which says that if there is a pulp stone which we cannot remove it, you pack it with EDTA and in the next visit, you will be able to uh, remove the pulp stone and negotiate the canals. But ideally, this is not going to work because the activity of the EDTA gel is for some couple of minutes. And after that, there will be no effectiveness and it may not be a good practice. So for a removal of a pulp stone, we should use ultrasonics or we can use some cutting instruments like a rotary burst or there are some specialized bursts for this purpose we can use for removing the pulp stones. EDTA will not be a agent which is really helpful for removal of pulp stone. Next let's see about the calcified canal negotiation and EDTA. There is a common practice that whenever the canal is calcified and if you are not able to negotiate it we are told that use EDTA. So EDTA will soften the calcifications and we will be able to negotiate the canals easily. Let's see in this example, let's keep the canals of this maxillary molars are calcified and if you are trying to negotiate with a file, we will not be able to negotiate, especially beyond this curvature. Let's keep that we are not able to negotiate. So we remove the file and we fill the canal up to the place that we have negotiated with EDTA. We wait for a couple of minutes. And what this EDTA does is the EDTA will soften the calcifications and not only the calcifications, it will also soften the dentin because for EDTA, Dendin is also a calcified structure. The calcifications also a calcified structure. So it softens both the dendin and also the calcifications, maybe for 0 0.1, 2, 3 or 0.5 millimeters to the maximum. So once this happens, and now if you are trying to negotiate with a hand file, we all know that the hand files have a tip which is cutting. And let's keep 
in the area where there is the curvature starts and we have applied EDTA and if you are trying to negotiate the canal with a file which is having a cutting tip what happens is it will there is no need that the file have to follow the pathway of the root canal and the original canal anatomy instead now the dentin is also soft so it will create a pathway in the dentin and it may end up we may end up doing a file perforation so this is a common mistake that we do while doing canal negotiations. So canal negotiations and EDTA, maybe if the canal is partially, uh, um, partially calcified in that situation and if you are using a small file and little EDTA, it may be helpful. But in case of complete canal calcifications, EDTA may lead to more procedural errors rather than helping for canal negotiations. So in those situations, canals must be negotiated with a K-file or any specialized files which are meant for this purpose and not adding more and more EDTA. So more and more EDTA, EDTA may lead to procedural errors like canal deviation, like uh, apical perforations or perforations at the site of the uh, curvatures and EDTA will not be useful for root canal negotiations. Then comes the function of EDTA in cleaning and shaping. So here let's keep that uh, there is a calcified canal and we have negotiated the canal with a small hand file to the full length. After that if you are applying EDTA then EDTA will help in doing cleaning and shaping easily why because there is a pathway and now the rotary file or whatever the hand file that you are using will be able to follow the pathway which was created by the glide file so edta can be used after a complete canal negotiation and edta should never be used until a canal negotiation has been achieved so especially in case of uh, Calcified canals are very, very narrow canals in case of older patients. After attaining canal patency, if you are using EDTA for cleaning and shaping, our cleaning and shaping will be super easy. We are going to be able to finish the cleaning and shaping in a couple of minutes rather than doing a slow enlargement otherwise. So EDTA is a really good agent which aids in cleaning and shaping, but it never should be never used before complete canal negotiation. Then we shall see about the interactions of EDTA with that of sodium hypochlorite. So if you are mixing, there are some researchers which says that if you are using EDTA mixed with sodium hypochlorite, it is very good. But there are many researchers which says that if you are combining EDTA and sodium hypochlorite together, the efficiency of both of these chemical agents gets reduced. For example, the sodium hypochlorite, uh, the, the antibacterial activity of sodium hypochlorite gets reduced and the EDTA, the lubrication activity or the chelation activity of EDTA gets reduced. So it is not a good practice to combine both EDTA and sodium hypochlorite use one of the agent, for example, sodium hypochlorite, flush it out with saline, then you can use EDTA. So do not mix both EDTA and sodium hypochlorite. And there is a suggestion which says that if you are using EDTA, there are more incidents of file fracture or file separations. It may be little difficult for many people to understand EDTA is a lubricant it is going to help us to do cleaning and shaping by making a easy lubricating action and creating a good and easy pathway especially a glide path and the chelation activity and all this how come it could lead to a file fracture how can it could increase the chance for file fracture but actually what could happen is whenever you are using edta once the chelating action take place it will combine with the dentin debris to form a semi-solid moss 
and it will pose extra stress to the file that we are using for cleaning and shaping. So in those situations, what could happen is the file may get fractured. So what is the idea? So whenever you are using EDTA, again, clean it every, every maybe when, when, whenever we are changing the file. So once you put the EDTA and if you from the start till the end, if you are thinking that EDTA is there and it is going to lubricate everything, no. Once the file starts cutting the dentin, the consistency of the EDTA that you placed will keep on increasing. Once it goes beyond a limit, the file will get embedded in that semi-solid mass and it might fracture. So we should use a good brand of EDTA, especially in the gel form. If the uh, the most more affordable products may have a thicker consistency and it might lead to more uh, file fractures. The other reason which is suggested is the EDTA may abrade the surface of the file that we are using for cleaning and shaping. How does this happen? Because these files will undergo a lot of treatments, especially in the surface, in order to make it hard for enhancing the cutting efficiency and making it robust. But the EDTA can abrade the surface of these files, thus the file might fracture. Again, there are no clear-cut evidence that if you are using EDTA, the file will fracture, but there are more researchers which states that, especially if you are using a viscous form of EDTA, that chances for the file fracture may be more. If you are asking me, whether using EDTA is good or bad, I most often in 95% of the situations, I will not use EDTA as a lubricant. I trust on the sodium hypochlorite for a lubricating action. And maybe the, so the EDTA solution is really helpful for the smear layer removal and it is not going to be a really a very good agent in the gel form. So I do not use as in most of the cases, but in case of narrow canals and if there is extreme calcifications, but we have negotiated in those situations, EDTA may help in doing a faster root canal preparations. And finally, Okay, so what's the use of this liquid EDTA? The liquid form of the EDTA is really a very wonderful and a beautiful agent. If you are expecting and looking at the social media, the Instagram, the Facebook post, and if you are thinking that how to get those beautiful, uh, the lateral canals which are uh, filled by the root canal abturations uh, and all those accessory canals are inside the uh, through the apical foramen, you will be able to see the sealer puff and why in my obturations all these things are not happening. If you want to make your obturations look to such qualities, then use the liquid form of EDTA. So what it does is, the liquid form of the EDTA, we expect the root canal walls while doing cleaning and shaping, the dentinal tubule should be open like this and the root the dentinal tubules are very clean like this, but actually it will not be. It will be filled with the smear layer, which is created while doing cleaning and shaping. So this smear layer will be blocking the dentinal tubules and also those lateral canals, accessory canals, the apical foramen and everywhere. But if you are using the liquid form of EDTA, it will dissolve, it will kill it, and it will remove all the smear plugs which are blocking the dentinal tubules and the accessory lateral canals, the apical foramen, everything, and it will give the canal clean, neat, and it will enhance the penetration of the sealer or the obturation material inside those small accessory canals. So EDTA in the liquid form is a really, really a helpful agent. And one more advantage is if you are using this EDTA solution, it will remove the smear layer, the smear plugs, everything will be removed. So the sodium hypochlorite now can penetrate deep inside the dentinal tubules and also the lateral and the accessory canals and it can destroy those microorganisms which are protected by the smear layer and so that the action of the 
sodium hypochlorite could not reach to a deep depth but after removing after using the liquid form of the edta the sodium hypochlorite could go deeper inside and it is going to be a really helpful form of a chemical for doing for while using uh, for, uh, we can use while doing root canal treatment and next if you are trying to practice the regenerative endodontic practice like uh, a pulp revascularization or a regenerative endodontic procedure like pulp uh, revitalization procedures then the EDTA in the liquid form has a real good advantage so the liquid form of the EDTA can extract and it can enhance the growth factors from the dentine and the nearby substructures so that the growth factors content will be more and that will enhance the ability for the pulp to get revascularized. So if you are doing revascularization procedure, the last chemical that you must be using should be the liquid form of EDTA and even in the regular root canal treatment, the solution form or the liquid form of EDTA is a really very very helpful agent. So I have given a simple gist of EDTA in the liquid form and also in the gel form. The gel form may not be a very very helpful agent but the only indications where I practice is whenever the canal is negotiated till the full length then you can use the gel form of the EDTA. Again be careful use a better product. Some of the products will become hardened while you are using and while stress is generated that while doing cleaning and shaping it might become hardened and it might lead to file separation. So if you are using that use a better product and unnecessarily sodium hypochlorite alone is enough and the gel form of EDTA is not very very helpful except in cases of canal calcified narrow canals or calcified canals after negotiation those situations we can use otherwise it's not that much indicated or needed and if the liquid form of EDTA is a wonderful agent it will act as a lubricant it will remove the smear layer effectively and the enhancement of this antibacterial activity of the sodium hypochlorite and the beautiful obturations with better success can be provided or achieved by the liquid form of EDTA. So it is the time to reconsider the use of the gel form of the EDTA and start using more of the liquid form of the EDTA. There are some suggestions, some people who suggest that once you prepare the access cavity, fill the entire pulp chamber with EDTA gel and every file that you are using for negotiation, cleaning and shaping, everything should be coated with EDTA. I do not recommend that but if you are practicing that and if it is okay with you it is fine but otherwise reconsider my ideas and suggestions and you, your practice will enhance and improve I am I can give guarantee for that so thanks for watching till the end and have a nice day and next week I will come up with another video thank you